Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to talk about something that seems very strange. It's called the photon mass because we've just been talking about photons having no mass. So why would we actually talk about photons as if they have mass? So, does a photon have does a photon has mass? No, not really, but why is there a but? Well, it kind of acts like it has mass and there's some effects with photons as if they have mass. So let's explore that a little bit more. So here we have the equation from relativity where the total energy of a particle squared is equal to the rest mass of that particle, quantity squared, plus the momentum times c, quantity squared. All right, so that is good for any particle, and that is also good relativistically. So no matter how fast a particle moves, as it's gaining mass with increasing speed, we can say that the total energy squared is equal to that. So now for a photon, since we know that the photon doesn't have mass, we can go ahead and get rid of this term. So for a photon, there's no rest mass, so we set that equal to zero, which means that the energy squared is equal to the momentum times the speed of light, quantity squared, so therefore we can take the square root of both sides. So we can say that the energy is equal to the momentum times the speed of light, or the momentum is equal to the energy divided by the speed of light. And of course, remember that the energy of a photon is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency. So we can say that the momentum P is equal to H times F divided by the speed of light. And of course, the momentum for any particle is always the mass times the velocity. So here things become a little strange. So here we're going to go on a limb and say, OK, let's say that the momentum is mass times velocity. So let's come over here. So we can say that the mass times velocity, and I'll put mass in quotation marks because, of course, we know photon really doesn't have mass, but it sometimes acts as if it does. So we'll write mv equals h f divided by c. And of course, we know that photons move at the speed of light. So in this case, the velocity is the speed of light. So we can say that the mass of a photon, of course, again, in quotation marks, times c is equal to h f divided by c. It moves the c down there. We can then say that the mass of the fictitious mass, if you want to call it that, is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency divided by c squared. So there's what we would call the equivalent or the fictitious mass of a photon. It acts as if it has that mass. And we can say that that mass is equal to hf divided by c squared. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's say we have the Earth right here, and a photon comes in from space. Oop, and a photon, of course, doesn't look like that. A photon, uh, let's make it look like a little squiggly line. But also, let's say we have a rock coming in from space, and the rock is headed towards the Earth. And so we can say that as a rock plows through the atmosphere and it gets closer and closer and closer, it will then convert its potential energy to kinetic energy. So we know that the mgh will turn into one half mv squared. But what about a photon? A photon has an equivalent mass. So we can say that a photon, the mass of a photon, is equal to hf divided by c squared. And so as the photon plows through the atmosphere and heads towards the Earth, it will convert potential energy into kinetic energy. It will gain kinetic energy. So the delta kinetic energy that the photon gains is equal to the lost potential energy, and the lost potential energy is mgh. So in this case, it would have to be hf over c squared, which is the equivalent mass, times g times h. Now, of course, this is the height. So maybe not to confuse it with Planck's constant, let's just use a capital H for height here and a capital H for height here so we don't confuse that with the Planck's constant H. So we can say that a photon will actually gain kinetic energy and therefore the, what would happen? Well, that, that means that the, the frequency would go up and that the wavelength would go down. So actually, it will have a slightly shorter wavelength as it gets pulled in by the gravitational force of the Earth, slightly shorter wavelength, a slightly higher frequency because the increased gain kinetic energy from the, the energy conversion from potential energy to kinetic energy. Now, can we measure that? Well, since the gravitational force of the Earth is so small compared to like very large stars or, or, or uh, galaxies or something like that. So therefore, it's something that's barely measurable, if at all. The change in the kinetic energy is so minute that we probably cannot measure that. But 
There are cases where we can. And I'll show you an example in the next video where this principle becomes extremely important when we talk about astronomy and cosmology. And again, it's all in the quest of understanding what a photon is. So here we can see a photon has kind of equivalent mass and it actually acts like a real particle that has mass converting potential to kinetic energy. Wow, who would have thought when we said photons have no mass? And there's another window in the understanding of what photons are.